So every now and then I get this like weird urge to do something that's totally out of my wheelhouse or not my normal specialty. That's what I decided to do over the weekend. So recently I've been like seeing these in the box photo sessions where you put somebody in a bunch of boxes. Well, it's one box and you put them in multiple times and what you do is you actually Photoshop it together. And what it made me decide is I wanna do this too. I just wanna have some fun. I went on YouTube and there's not really a lot of videos that show you how to do it. So I'm gonna build one. I'm gonna show you what I used and how to do it. And we'll kind of walk through the whole process. And also I decided while doing this that I would create a free PSD Photoshop template for you guys to download. So if you wanna build this, and then you wanna do it in Photoshop, which I'll do at the end of this video, you can go ahead and do it without needing to design your own Photoshop template. So go ahead and download it. Description down below, free, I don't care. So basically what I did is I went to Ikea and I picked up these white tabletops. They're computer desks. It's called the Linman, I think is how you pronounce it. Linman, L-I-N-N-M-O-N. They were on sale for $20 a piece. And what I did is I bought four of them. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use these and create four sides. So that way I have all of my white boxes that I need. So this will kind of go like this. Now I do have a white backdrop, which is a Westcott backdrop. I'm hoping this is gonna work. Otherwise I am going to have to back it. So if I have to put another piece of white backing on it, I'm gonna to have to go to Home Depot and do that. But I'm gonna put this together first, see if I need backing. I think the backing will give it more support. The only downside is I can't have anybody laying down then in the box. If I wanted to have them laying this way, there's gonna be a backing on it, but I think I'm gonna to have to end up put a backing on it. We'll find out though, let's, let's build. So I got one side ready to go and I just need to open this other one. I'm gonna use my handy dandy screw here to get it open. And I'm using three inch screws. Here we go, couldn't get it. I'm using three inch screws. I'm gonna use 12 of them to start to see if that works. I am also gonna pre-drill pre all of my holes. And I will leave a link to everything that I bought down in the description down below. That way you guys don't have to go hunting for everything if you don't want to. But it was kind of fun to go hunting and try to figure this out. This is, it's honestly like one of the reasons that I do this stuff. I might not ever even book one of these sessions, but I just enjoy like trying to create stuff. And that's really what I, why I wanted to do this. So now I have this ready to go. What I'm gonna need to do is I'm actually going to need to pre-drill these. So I will go ahead and throw this up on here. Now this table actually has, or the desk I should say, has a white side, and then it also just has its untreated side. Now I need to make sure that all the white edges are forward and the untreated side is going to be on the outside of whatever I'm doing because you want a white box on the inside. So I can just go ahead and give it one of these. And that should be good. Will that stay there for now, just for a second? Let me grab my drill here. I am definitely not a handyman, but I do have some skills in this industry. So we'll just make it work as much as we can. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill some holes here. Let's go right about here. So we'll go there. We will do one towards the center. And then we'll do one on the back edge here. Did I miss that one? Nope, we're good. All right. So we've pre-drilled our three. Stay there. Uh, 
and we'll go ahead and we will start these then. I'm going to go ahead and just lay this down for a second to get these started. And hopefully I can find those holes and line it up. Yeah, it's starting to come through. That one's not quite coming through yet, so that's good. That one's starting to poke through. And we will just go ahead and I might need to grab a um, kind of like a vise to hold these down. So let's go ahead and go do that real quick. Okay, so I got a vise. I'm gonna just hold this table down. That way it doesn't move on me too much. There we go. Bring this up here. Get it lined up where it needs to be. Try to do the center one first. That way it's kind of getting it where it needs to be. I want these to be nice and flush. Just making sure that it stays where it needs to. Get her going in there. All right. The downside is, is my table's moving here. Not, not the table that I'm building, but the table that I'm working with. Let's go again. That went in. There we go. So now we have one side of our wall done. Okay, so I didn't think about the fact that uh, I put that on the inside because that was the first layer. So the table is actually going to have to go back up on here and it's going to have to sheet over it. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not a construction worker. I just know how to build some shit every now and then. It's actually upside down. White side is going to need to be, no. Yes, white side is gonna to need to be up. There we go. All of you people screaming at me in the comments about not knowing what I'm doing. Remember, I told you guys I didn't know what I was doing in the first place, but I have a creative mind and I had to figure it out. And I had to try to build one of these. Let's get this up on here, back up on here. Let's do it this way. So it'll be like that. Loosen that, bring this down to the edge so I can work on it. And we're just gonna repeat the process again. So I'm gonna try this a little bit different this time. And I'm actually gonna do one at a time. I'm gonna pre-drill and then I'm gonna screw it in. That way I'm not just sitting here just ramming on it. And then I'll, I also don't lose my guide holes then either. So I actually worked a lot better doing it that way. It's a little bit more of a daunting process because I got to switch every, every other time. Because then we know our holes are actually lining up and we're not just sitting here stripping out screws over and over and over again. We're getting it where it actually needs to be. Difficult because my table's still moving around. But it's a lot easier to do it this way. And we'll do one in the center here. 
There, a little more flush now. One more side to do here. And then we got our box all built up and we're ready to go. So our box is now completely built. Four sides, I gotta figure out the back still. I'm hoping that that backdrop will work. Otherwise, off to Home Depot we go to get a backing. I still may eventually put a backing on it because I'm kind of worried about it being flimsy because it's literally just connected by the corners. But for right now, I think it's good. Let's, let's take the vice grip off and see how sturdy it is. So we got, I mean, it's pretty sturdy. Doesn't worry me too much. But now how do we do the backdrop? Will it, will, cause I want it to be tight. So I would actually have to probably wrap the backdrop over it. I'm gonna have to take this down, which now this is probably gonna be really heavy. Let's find out. This is probably where I break it. So let's see, ooh, it's a little heavy. And then what I wanna do is I wanna actually bring this up like this. Cause I want white in the foreground as well. So like this, and then we will bring this back. Now this is gonna make it a little bit more slippery. So I also have to take that into consideration. But So what I want is I want to make sure that there's white on the foreground of the table and then white behind the box too. So, and in the editing and photography portion of this video, I will show you why. So if we put it there, get it right on the edge, we should be pretty good to go. And actually, that backdrop actually stops it from moving as much. I was worried it was gonna do the opposite, but it actually is doing a pretty good job. So now, let's take this backdrop down and see if we can make it do what we want it to do, which I don't know. What I basically want is I want it to come up and over and wrap like that. So I might have to put some type of hooks in here to see if I can make it work. But if I can, that'd be pretty awesome. Because that would save both me and you guys, if you have a backdrop like this, like 30 bucks. Right now, I'm about, I'd say probably $80 into this. Where's my top? So what if we do it like that? It's just, just before the edge there. Bring this one up. So we're fighting against ourselves here a little bit, but then bring it like that and then bring it up. That just might work. I think that's gonna be okay. So our box is built now, we have it all set up. I'm gonna bring the camera over here so you can see it a little bit more. So like I said, box is built. Back looks okay. I think it's gonna be all right. We have white in the foreground. That's what we wanted. Now we just need to light it and see what it's gonna look like. So let's go ahead. Let's get some lighting on it. I'm gonna try, honestly, just a one light setup and see if that'll work. If a one light setup will work, this will be like the easiest thing in the world. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna to try to light this with a single seven foot umbrella and see if I can make it work. If not, we'll go back to a multi-light setup. But like I said, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, so any of you can re replicate it if you want to. I am using all Westcott lighting. This is a Westcott FJ400 that I'm putting on it. A Westcott seven foot umbrella and a generic Amazon heavy duty C-stand. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw this on there. Camera that I'm using, I'll get into in a second for camera settings, but I am using a Sony a7R4 with a 24 to 105 lens on it. And that is another step that I'm gonna have to play around with and figure out what I need my settings to be. We're not gonna take this super high. We want it kind of not to cause any shadows or anything. And we're gonna put it right behind our 
camera. Now I am going to shoot with a tether and that just completely blocked everything. So let me take the what I did here. So let's switch to another angle here. So I have the seven foot umbrella directly on here with my Sony a7R4. I need to kind of still get back here and figure out the settings. So I'll just slide it back a little bit. And also what I'll do is I'll tether. So when I tether, I'm gonna bring my tether cable up because I'm actually gonna sit in this first because I was always taught to test stuff yourself first before you put anybody else in it. So let me grab my tether, let me grab my, my iPad and we'll go ahead and tether. But this should be set up and ready to go. Gonna play with the settings, the lighting a little bit, but we should be pretty good. Let's get over into the camera settings now. Okay, we got it all set up. Uh, I am using the 24 to 105. I have it set at about 24 millimeters because what I need to do is when I photograph, I need to be able to capture all of the box as well as enough for their legs. And I'm gonna show you a photo that I took. Yes, I got in it. I took nine photos so I can stitch them together. But now you're seeing what it looks like with me with my legs down. I'll show another one here separate. But the main important part is, is turn your grid on. So if you don't know how, go into your camera, figure out how to turn your grid on because you need to make sure all of your lines are square. This is probably the most tedious part that took me probably 10 minutes to get, to be zoomed out far enough to make sure that my camera is level with the center. So you wanna make sure that the end of your lens, the center of your lens is dead even center with that. So then that way your lines all line up, you're low enough that you're capturing everything, your light isn't too high where it's causing any shadows. And then that way you can go into Photoshop and you can stitch this together super quick, super easy. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Let's go ahead and go over into my computer and I'm gonna show you how to stitch this and edit it. Okay, so now that we've done our nine photos, we've taken our nine photos that we wanna use. I, what I did is I cropped them down to a one one, that way they're easier when I bring them over. Now, if you use my free PSD template that I am leaving in the description down below, you can go download it completely free. No need to pay for anything or anything like that. Just enter your email, download the free PSD. Once you do that, this is gonna make it so much simpler and I'm gonna show you how. Now, yes, there is a little bit of Photoshop that's needed to be done and it can be a little daunting and a little uh, task heavy, but it's pretty simple for the most part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring these nine photos over. That's how many we have because we want a nine photo cell image and we will go edit in Photoshop and this is Photoshop beta that is going to bring it over in for me. What it will actually do is it will look like this photo when we're done. Now I'm not going to go through every single little minor step on how to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it with the template because it makes it really simple. So we have our nine images here. They are very big images, so we're actually gonna shrink them down to fit the template, but let's go ahead and do that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take each image and I'm gonna bring them down. These are a little bit smaller because I want to make sure that they're not massive on my computer for editing purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring them down a little, each one, and then from there, I will show you the next step. Okay, so we got each one of our images down in size. Now they will fit this template better. So what we're gonna do we're going to get rid of this mask and we will get rid of that layer and we don't need my image on there or my name on there as well so what you're seeing now is you're seeing nine images squares and the way that i did that is i came in here let's get rid of all let's just go ahead and delete them all so now they're all gone so now all we have is our name on the bottom. So what I need to do now is I need to go in and I need to take one of these, copy it and paste it in here. Now let's go ahead and turn our rectangles back on so we can see where this needs to be. And let's go ahead and lock that in place. There we go for now. So now what we can do is we can grab this. Oh, I locked the wrong one. We want to lock this one. Now we'll grab this one and we'll bring this where, where it needs to be, which is right about there. So now what we will do is we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get rid of the rest of this stuff here. So we'll just use this and go here, here. Now, because my feet are hanging under this, we want to make sure that we keep the feet there. 
and then we will go ahead, invert, and delete. So there we got our first square ready to go. Let's go ahead and get our second one. Come back over here, bring that in, figure out where it needs to go. Let's just go ahead. So this one's going to be probably here. Let's go down here on the bottom with this one. And then we will just move it into place. We will go ahead and keep what we need to keep. Inverse. Delete. We'll go ahead and grab the next one. And I'm just going to go ahead and close these as I'm going. That way I can see which ones I have done already. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. But I just want to make sure that I got it going right. So now this one, I want to actually take and put here because this one's actually going to be messing with the, the other one. Okay, so now what we need to do, the next little step to this is get everything even. Can you see how my camera was just slightly tilted? So I need to fix that. So, and the way that we're going to do that is we're literally just going to go in here and just turn each one ever so slightly until everything looks level. And if you need to, what you can do is bring in your grid and actually just go like this. That way you can see if everything's going to be level or not. So there, that's even on that one. Come here, get this one level. And I'm just watching the line up top to make sure that it matches this green line. There we go. This one. Oh, we need to bring another line in here so we can see what's going on. Just going to match it up with that point and then just turn all these until they're straight. So now we're all even here. Now we can get rid of these grids by just grabbing them and pulling them out of here. So now we have everything where it needs to be. Uh, we have some stuff that's kind of spilling over here. We'll get rid of that here in a little bit. Uh, then we'll just do that final touches here. But now what we need to do is we need to bring in the layers that are overlapping. And this one is going to be here. So what I need to do first is I need to get rid of all of this down here. So I'm just going to grab the magnetic lasso tool here. Go around. And then let's go in. A little bit tighter. Make sure we got this stuff. I'm going to grab my polygonal lasso tool. Come in here. And then we're just going to finish up here. And then let's do this one here to because it does look like fabric right here. And I don't want it to look like fabric. I want it to look like the white. So we will go ahead and do that. And we will delete all that. So there we go. We got that one. Let's see if there's anything else that looks out of the ordinary. Now, I'm not talking about like this yet. I'm just talking about making sure everything is lined up and square. Let's bring that down just a little. Okay, so now I think everything is where it needs to be for that part. So now we need to start masking stuff out. And the way that we do that is we actually don't mask our people, our subjects. We mask this white line that's on top of everything. This line right here is what we're going to mask because uh, you can see that's what's hiding everything. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go here and we're going to unlock it first. We're going to create a mask. We're going to make sure we're on that mask, and then we're going to start painting black where we want stuff to show up, where we want the overlays. But we can't really see it right now, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that layer, and we're going to turn the opacity down to, like, 60%. That way we can see what we're doing. And remember, we're only doing the areas where we want our stuff to show up. So, like, here. And then we'll go ahead and color in. I'm using a Wacom tablet. It makes this fine tuning so much easier and quicker. I would highly suggest getting one. Go over to this side. I'm going to color that in. Bring this, color this in. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger now. And there we go. So now if we bring the opacity back all the way on this, now you can see them sitting the, sitting over the edge of it. Okay. So let's go and let's find the next one that is overlapping anything that we need. Uh, let's bring that back up just a little so we can see what's going on. 
So none of these, none of the rest of these overlap up here. This is our next one that we need to worry about here. So let's bring that up. I like to bring all of the, the ones that I'm working on, I like to bring them up to a higher layer. That way I can see what's going on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to fix this one because there's still some of this stuff showing from the mask. So let's go ahead and fix that. And we'll go ahead and deselect some of this because we don't want this to be got rid of. Go down here, make sure the fingers are still in there. And then we will go in and add. So basically I'm just continuing this mask here. That's all I'm doing. Or this selection, I should say. So we'll delete that stuff. So now we have our hand the way we want it. Yes, I would take more time and make sure this looks a little bit better, but I don't want to take up a ton of time doing this little tedious stuff that you guys should already know how to do. Should be good from there. Okay, so let's get back to our mask now. Back to our black mask. We're going to come up here. We're going to get this hat first of all. So we'll just color in the hat. But we're not technically coloring in the hat though. Remember, we're coloring in the mask black. Come around. We're gonna go and do it here on this finger. I'm gonna do this finger. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And then we'll do the index finger here. And there we go. So now when we bring this back, you can see that the hand is now showing. We just fine tune it a little bit more. Make sure that our hand is in there. Now our hand is there. Like I said, you'd want to take your time and do it a little bit smoother than that. But I'm in a hurry. I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time with this little tedious stuff that you should already know how to do. Right? So let's go down here. We have a foot that is... Both feet are coming out here. So we need to grab our black brush here. Come in. Make sure those are out. There's a pant leg. Part of the shoe. Coming through. Get that shoelace. These little fine details are really what make it look real. We come over here, we'll see this one is here. Let's bring this shoe in, still masking that layer. We need to do these fingers here and this little guy right here. Come over here, the edge of my knee. Like I said, the fine details are what make it look realistic. And then we'll do the foot here, and I think that's the end. There might be one on the layer above, but I don't think so. You probably get away with not needing to do that one because that's probably going to be covered up. So it looks good now. So let's zoom out. And then let's bring that layer opacity all the way back up, 100%. So this is all good to go now. Nine squares all interacting with each other. And then we will just throw our logo back down on the bottom here. And you are good to go. Your nine squares are done. Now, once again, go download the template for this and just follow along with the masks. If you need to come back to this video, so bookmark this video or save it, put it in your watch later, put it in a playlist, whatever you want to do. That way you can come back and watch this again later to see how I did that. So that's an in the box studio setup with one light, a seven foot umbrella, uh, some Ikea desktops and a backdrop. I will leave links in the description down below for everything that I can. If you use any of the Westcott links, you're actually going to save a little bit of money. And in return, I make a little bit of money. So thank you so much for doing that. Also, if this helped you out, make sure you stick around and check out some of my other videos like this one right here. Uh, YouTube really thinks that you'll enjoy this one. Otherwise, hit the follow, share this with a buddy, do one of those things. All of that really helps me out. So I appreciate it. See you in the next video. Deuces.